just one more little look at damping okay so um if we sketch the amplitude against time graph so remember this is a little bit different to what we did last lesson last lesson we were talking about the amplitude after a certain amount of time against area this is amplitude against time for lightly moderately and heavily damped oscillations okay here's our first one so here's a lightly damped oscillation you'll see the amplitude each time is um, the oscillation is not coming quite as far so this is slowly dying away Okay, here's our moderately damped oscillation, and this is probably the easiest one for us to show here. Um, the crucial, th the shape of the uh, peak of this graph is an exponential decay. So if we can look at this, okay, if we start at 50, if we go to 25, go across here from 25, okay, we get just after six seconds, the amplitude of this oscillation is 25, half the original oscillation. Okay, we notice that obviously this oscillation is varying but this is the amplitude so we're sort of talking about the amplitude of oscillation even though it's not actually its maximum okay if we then go to 12 and a half okay so 12 and a half is about here go across and we find we're just a bit over 12 seconds okay twice the time we've halved the oscillation okay if we went to 18 seconds we'd be down to six and a quarter okay it's sort of telling you the oscillation will never completely disappear Okay, here's a heavily damped oscillation. So this is uh, an oscillation where the damping is, is so heavy that it dies away very quickly. Okay, so we can analyze this mathematically like we did last time. So the amplitude dies away in an exponential way. So the time for the amplitude to halve is a constant, just like half-life was when you did it in GCSE, and you'll come back to that in Unit 5. So we can model this in the equation. A, the amplitude at some time is a naught the initial amplitude e to the minus kt so this equation looks very similar to the one in the previous lesson but we've replaced the um, area of the card here by just time okay if we've got an equation we can do an analysis on that okay so we can look at a graph where it will give us values for a naught and k okay the way we do that is if a equals a naught e to the minus kt then we've got a and t as our variables so to find the constants of k and a naught, okay, what we need to do is this kind of standard log analysis, have a different, slightly different ways around to do this, but that's what we did last lesson. Okay, so here's our crucial step. Um, this equation here is the same equation as that one, but now if we plot a graph of log a against t, we'll get a negative gradient because it's a minus k here. So the gradient of this graph will be minus k, and the intercept here or with a log of a naught. Okay, these little spreadsheets uh, hopefully show you this again. So here I'm setting up, this is my k value here, or so this is um, how fast the oscillation is going to decay away. Here's the initial amplitude, here's the period of the oscillation. So this is what's going to happen to the oscillation over time. It's going to decay away. But if I take these peaks and I take the log of these peaks, I get this graph, which is showing us um, the relationship between the log of the amplitude and time. Okay, I can put a different factors in here. So if I have a very lightly damped oscillation, let's say 0 0.1, okay, then what I find here is that the oscillation doesn't decay, decay away very quickly. The gradient of this graph is minus 0 0.1. Okay, this value 3.9, okay, think about how that relates to 50, right? E to the 3.9 is 50, okay, or the log of 50 is 3.9. If I change it to a heavily damped oscillation, let's say 0 0.5, okay, it decays away very quickly. I get a very steep graph. Okay, again, the gradient's 0 0.5. Notice the intercept, though, has stayed the same because the intercept is the log of the amplitude where it starts. Okay, that's always going to be the same. If I change this number here, I'd get a different value for the intercept. Okay, um, don't be confused when this graph goes negative because this is the log of the amplitude. So this is just saying that the amplitude has got less than uh, one. We're doing this in millimeters, so less than one millimeter. Okay, it doesn't mean that it's a negative amplitude. Okay, I could change that, say, to 100. Okay, notice what happens here is we get a bigger initial amplitude that's gone off my graph. But, okay, what's happened here is that the intercept of the graph is now different. Okay, but the gradient stays the same.